Hi, I'm Carlos. I'm the Accidental Chef. Welcome to the Accidental Chef's Cooking School. Tonight is a very exciting night because tonight we're filming our first uh, cooking show episode. So I, I have to tell you, I've been on TV before, but I've never done a cooking show. I mostly do everything extemporaneously, so I have a script here, so I get nervous. All I'm really concerned about is that my hair looks good. <laughs> and so, you know what I'm saying? And that's really the bottom line, right? In fact, when I'm my age and I have hair, that's like a cool thing <laughs> to go. Tonight we're doing a, a full menu. So on your, on your plate should be your menu card. It's got, the cover tells you what we're gonna do. We might not necessarily cook them in that order because we have to do things so that they take a little longer to do that. Um, the second part is a bio on me. Now those are recipe cards. And I mostly give you those so you remember the name of the dish. I'm not gonna follow anybody here an educator. No, okay, it's always good to have a school teacher because she goes, you forgot one. And because it's really important because I'm talking and if I forget something, particularly if you're baking, you never want to forget anything. So, that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to teach you to cook, not to read a recipe. I hope you all understand this is recreational cooking. You're actually not going to do any cooking. You're all at the chef's table. The back of the house, as they say in the restaurant business, is the front of the house. So you're in the kitchen. So it might get a little warm. So, but you're in the kitchen. You know what they say about the kitchen. So, bear with me. Wade well, is your server. He will bring you whatever you want. We will start with white wine with the appetizer and the uh, salad. Then we will switch over to a red with the entree, okay? And then we'll finish off with a lovely dessert. And if you want coffee, we have a beautiful coffee bar. Our underwriter is Colburn's and KitchenAid, so they've provided us with all these beautiful appliances. So I'm gonna reference them throughout the night as I use them and how they can work. And when you build your dream kitchen, we're hoping you'll go to Colburn's and get all KitchenAid, okay? Any questions before I go on? All right, cool. Well, the first thing I'm gonna to do tonight is I'm gonna process the eggplant. We're having eggplant uh, roll-ups, or eggplant, I call them Sicilian egg rolls, because we're gonna take these eggplant and we're gonna fry it, and then we're gonna make a cheese filling, and it's gonna be like manicotti, except that instead of a pasta noodle that's stuffed in, it'll be stuffed in this fried eggplant, and it will sit in a, uh, some marinara sauce, and we'll bake it, and it's just gonna be wonderful. You Think you have died and gone to Sicily. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. So I've got to soak this. If you've ever cooked with eggplants, you know that it can be bitter. So soaking it in salt water will keep it um, from being bitter. I'm going to use this pan. I put, as you can see, copious amounts of salt. Don't be afraid to put too much salt, it's going to stay in there. You really know when it's right, when the water's black. Okay? The water will we'll pull it all out. So what I'm going to do is, um, when you're buying the eggplant, you want to try and get as eggplant as long and narrow as possible. This one isn't that right. You know, they're not at full season, so the selection is not as good. Um, and I'm going to pull this in off so it's good. Don't have to peel it. Rarely do you have to peel eggplant because it's really wonderful like that. And I'm going to cross cut it. Now this one is not like that. I'm going to pull that bulge off so I've got a nice flat edge as you see I'm trying to make planks. Make sure you pull the label off because it doesn't toast up as lovely as you want. So I'm going to cut this about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, okay? You can see as I just kind of did it, if you notice I'm doing a sawing motion so I can control my length. I'm watching as I go down. Just. Um, now I've done this a zillion times, so it's real, it looks like it's real easy, but it takes some real skill to keep that width the same at the top. Now if you're really fancy and you have a really nice muli, you can just use the muli, which is a slicer that slices it, okay? I don't like them because the last piece always cuts my fingertips off. So, and we don't want the Dan Aykroyd, uh, Julia Child episode tonight, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> So this last piece, which is, you know, irregular, I'm just going to trim it. Now normally when I make this for production, I've been a caterer for 10 years. I started by with a line of frozen uh, Italian entrees. So I'm going to take some olive oil. I always use extra virgin olive oil. Now the rule is that you put about this much, about a quarter of an inch of olive oil over the surface of the bottom. That way, regardless of the size of the pot, if I'm cooking in this small pot or if I have a pot this big, if I put this much olive oil in the bottom, I know it's the right amount. 
I learned that from my mother's cookbook because all of her recipes referred to a certain kettle full of this pot or that pot. We didn't know what that meant. Okay, so I've just added that. Okay, to that I'm going to add some garlic. Now I took and it's ready. Okay, I'm going to put that in here. This is the simplest sauce you've ever going to eat or cook or ever do. And it's really the most wonderful one. All right, I'm just going to stir that up a little, make sure it's spread. Now garlic is very sensitive. It will burn quickly. So you can't you can't ignore it or that. Uh, okay, so that's that's coming up. I'm gonna bring my heat up just a little bit more. Okay, now this is crushed tomatoes. Okay, tomatoes come diced, pureed, whole, plump, all those different cans. You know, the crushed tomatoes are usually at the bottom. Okay, they're just. Um, you can see on the tomato, they're just kind of not pureed. There's still some uh, some evidence of the tomato there. So they're not even when you puree something, there's nothing there. It goes to a sieve or it's baby ready. Um, but you can see evidence of the skin and the seeds in here. So I'm going to add this to this. Now, my recommendation is to use a deep pot because once that tomatoes get hot, they pop. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Now we're going to make bruschetta. Okay. The bruschetta is tomatoes and peppers. Lots of people serve different bruschettas. Hey, guys. You can see how I come in. The, um, so we're going to take the bread. First thing we're going to do is we're going to baste the bread. I'm, uh, we're going to take olive oil. I took olive oil and I infused it with anchovies. Now, anchovies are little small fish that are like um, sardines, okay, but they're very potent, they're very fragrant, and they give a wonderful flavor to anything and bring a, a salt kind of flavor to it. So I'll put that in there and I'm just going to um, puree the thing and I'm just, just olive oil and, and the anchovy, all right? All right, I'm gonna take these like this and just set them on the pan, and then we're gonna baste them like that. I'm just gonna be very generous. I found, I used to just do the oil, but I found that the anchovy just brought a new taste to it, so whenever they, um, these are a little bigger than we usually do them, but I felt like tonight it would be fun to make them sort of bigger, okay? So, JR, you want to finish that up for me? Yes, sir. You can leave that right there. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to infuse this olive oil with garlic. So he's going to, I'm going to put whole garlic in there and just let it brown in there very slowly. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, um, I'm going to put this on my simmer low setting. Thank you. Great. That's perfect. So, between 1884 and the So I've got this going over here. While this is going over here, I'm gonna cut up some lovely peppers. I've got um, red, an orange, and a gold. Um, the color is very nice. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slice this so that I go around the core and I've got, I'm not peeling you know how you, you slice them? You see how I did that? So you got, you're not going, cutting the middle out and coring all that stuff. You've got almost all of it. Let's see if you can find me one of those white paring knives back there. Thank you. Okay. So I've got my yellow. Now I'm going to do my orange. I'm just staying away from that like that. Kind of in a semicircle following the natural curvature of the, uh, of the thing. There, like that, okay? Now, this kind of a dish is good when you have produce that isn't perfect. So if you've got, a, you've got some peppers that are um, kind of, you know, might have a spot or this funky, you know, um, especially in this heat, produce is to break the skin to get in and then draw it down, okay? At home, I have a bird beak knife, which is this marvelous little paring knife that has this hook and the inside of the beak is where it's sharp and it just you catch that beak on there and it pulls it through 
All right. Any luck there, JR? What white? Like, but it'll work. Brand okay, new. thank you. Oh, yes. So I'm going this way so I get some nice strips there. All right. If you have any questions, just ask me. I'm trying not to cut myself, so. But I can talk and do that. toasty smell and that nice so now I'm just going to cross cut these in a big way so that I get well, they don't you know I'm not worried about them being all uniform and that because they're going to be strip like and uh, see that guy from the cardam blue giving me the eye over here because I have, I have poor knife skills compared to him but anyway I'm going to use I'm going to put them back in at some juncture Right now, I'm going to pull them out because my oil is nicely flavored with the olive oil. Now, you have to be real careful with flavored oils because flavored oils, if they're not done properly, is probably one of the highest um, incidences of botulism in poisoning. So you have to be real careful when you're flavoring and heating the oil and how it's processed. So, okay. All right, I'm going to take these beautiful peppers. I'm just going to put them in that nice, warm, sense oil. You know, some people say you eat with your eyes first. You certainly eat with your nose. So every experience is here. Look at that. All right. That, that just kind of thing. I'm going to come back. I'm going to bring my heat up a little because I want them to start simmering. And then I'm going to take, this is a Roma tomato. It's a, a nice tomato. And I'm just going to cross cut it like this. Now sometimes you can cut it this way. Some people like to take the seed out and the meat out and make it like that. So I'm, I, I don't have a preference. Because I'm going to cook these tomatoes in there until you, they're not evident anymore. So they're going away. So it really doesn't matter how you, you chop them or what you do with them, okay? So I'm just gonna cut these like this. Again, this is a great dish when your tomatoes are too ripe. They're not, you know, when these vegetables aren't presenting in the salad, then you can use them in another application. And uh, I was making, I had my olive oil and I was sauteing my onions, my garlic, the bell pepper, and the celery in there, kind of doing it. So she comes up behind me to check on me. She looks in the pot and she just whacks the back of my head and she says, what's the matter with you, you Mexican? <laughs> so I never put bell pepper and celery in my spaghetti ever again. That was the delineation. You see between those two things, they was like, they had their limits of their purity of where their, where their seasonings came from. So. We get that. You know, a lot of people say that Creole, when you think of Creole, you think of New Orleans, and you think of dishes that add tomato. Okay, right? And you think, well, we all think that Creole comes from some island mix or the, the, you know, the influence of Africa on our cooking. But I have to tell you. And so I'm just going to let this cook down. You know what, uh, JR? I need, um, I thought I had done it, but I need this um, full of dry basil. I used it. Any questions so far? Um, how long yes. does it take for tomatoes to cook in? Oh, it's going to take about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to add some coarse salt to that. And that's going to help break down the uh, tomatoes and that. The salt causes the vegetables to open up and breathe and that. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to break these up and get in some good heat here. All right. Added some salt. I'm going to add some dry basil to that. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to add my olive oil drenched garlic back to that. I'm just going to let that cook down. And when it gets good and hot, I'm going to bring the heat up a little bit more. I'm going to get it good and hot. Would you stir that? Make sure it's not sticky, please. Thank you. All right. Any 
questions. Hey, come on in. Look, sit right there. This is my new friend I just met. Her name is Agnes. She is, her family is Italian, but they didn't migrate to Louisiana. They migrated to Marseille. And her father married a French woman. And then she married a Cajun and moved to New Iberia. That's it. And so she's a chef, and she's going to come and do, uh, she does demonstration cooking, reparation cooking in her home. And so I like to cook with vermouth because it's very inexpensive. It's very dry. It's very easy to use and has a screw on top. Okay? But tonight I'm going to use the white wine that we're doing right now just to kind of give that some, some flavor there. Okay? I'm going to need some more white wine there. Um, willing to give up my glass of wine for you all's dinner. So, I think it should be your place. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. People are. Okay. And I'm just going to re keep breaking those things. So, I had to audition to get the catering job. So, once they tasted my food, it was uh, all over. So, we planned. There was a cooking school. There was also a nice transportation center. Then hopefully 25 years they'll both come to fruition. And also what's going to happen with the salt water and the, and the eggplant, it's going to make the eggplant more pliable so that it will roll better. Okay? You can see the water is starting to brown up in here from the eggplant. So as it pulls it out, we keep kind of dosing it down. All right. Put a little bit more of this. We're going to start of evaporating that wine and that thing in there, breaking up that tomato so it's got no. Um, now this is my own recipe. Most most bruschetta recipes are only tomato. When you order it in a restaurant, sometimes you get the bruschetta even on the side, and they'll serve you hard bread with it. So those are things to to really watch for. I think this is a uh, sufficiently um, done, okay? All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a spoon, I don't have a spoon, so I'm gonna borrow yours. And I'm just gonna take some of this like this, and I'm gonna scoop it on this bread, all right? Like that. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of coarse salt like this. Now, um, so we're going to put that coarse salt on top of that, and I'm going to take provolone cheese, which is a nice woody cheese, and I'm going to put it right here on the top, all right, like that. And then I'm going to bake those, and they're going to make that this cheese is going to shrink wrap uh, right around the bread, okay? It's going to be lovely. Yes. What's the difference between extra virgin olive oil and regular olive oil? Really? Yes. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> okay. We're in the back. There's an echo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, way to say, way to say, Marcel. <laughs> Let me hand this off to JR and I'll tell you. All right, JR, look, boop. We put some of this on there. Okay, so then a little, little sprinkle salt and then the provolone cheese. You can do it right there or you can take it to the back. It doesn't matter. All right. The extra virgin olive oil is the olive oil that's been pressed for the first time. That means extra virgin. We know what a virgin is. Touch for the first time. So, <laughs> Now, I'm going to make a salad. I like to start with the, oops, excuse me, the freshest ingredients and the most colorful ingredients, depending on the salad. Depending on what the salad is being paired with will depend on what, how, and what the uh, salad is made from. So tonight we're making what I call my gourmet salad. So I'm going to put this over here. Yes. 
All right, first thing I'm going to take some grape tomatoes, which I've um, grated, that is to say to go through and make sure none of them are soiled or dirty or, and rinsed them real good and did that. I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier with the peppers. I'm going to julienne these beautiful peppers because I just love them. They're so full of flavor and they're so colorful. They're going to make a wonderful salad for us tonight. Questions about anything so far? Mm -hmm. Either doing a really good job, or y'all are bored stiff and you're too embarrassed just to walk out. What's that for, my baby? Oh, thank you, thank you. You're a good man, Jay. Okay, I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna do like this, straight into the bowl, because it's just easier for me. All right, just like that. You can see I have, if I had my bird beak, it never slips because it's curved with my hand and the food and it just, and it's, it's a marvelous knife. Williams and Owner, a fine knife store like that, will have that. We're gonna have knife classes where, we, where people will come in that represent the knife companies and show us how to do carving and cutting. And this is a real skill to knives and what they do and what they're about and how they make cooking easy. Everything has a purpose. Okay, you have to realize that if, if it didn't have a purpose, it wouldn't have a particular feature because that feature costs money. So if the manufacturer can cut that particular manufacturing component out of that and remove that feature. So anyway, when I first got into cooking, I cooked, this is an English cucumber. Kind of looks like the Berkeley's variety that they grow around here. They're very straight. They usually come individually wrapped in plastic. They're very fine cucumbers. Um, when I first started, I, I had a job, and I had a wonderful job, a project I worked on for 13 years, 24-7, and then one day I got um, dismissed from that job. And so I really didn't have anything to do, so I had been cooking at a uh, church my kids went to every Wednesday night for 100, for 10 years. So I could cook mass quantities of food, and so those are the best recipes. So they would always send in. This is a thing I learned from the Cucumber uh, Growers Association. I've taken the cucumber and I've cut it into a block and now I'm gonna cut it this way, lengthways. People often say, oh, the zucchini in the salad was wonderful. <laughs> but you're gonna see tonight that this is gonna entirely change the taste of the cucumber, okay? and I'm just gonna slice it. I can make them thinner, I can make them thicker. Uh, I like to get four or five from each slice. Um, it's not a lot of peeling. It makes it very nice. It's, it really changes it. And, um, okay. So I'm doing that just like that. How's that red sauce doing, JR? Working. Working? Working. It's almost done? Close. Yeah, we're about 45 minutes into it. This, this lovely bunch of um, stuff. I've got my peppers, my um, tomatoes, and my cucumbers. See, I've got nice greens there, nice color, like that. So I'm going to make my salad dressing, and it's very easy. I'm going to take um, <clears throat> JR. You know that silver cup that's, um, yeah, yeah, all right. I'm gonna take, uh, for the recipe for the, I need some, uh, I'm gonna start with about a tablespoon of that garlic, the same garlic. Yeah, is it in here? I can't get in that bottom drawer, but anyway. I'm going to take a tablespoon of that same garlic. Okay. Could you also bring me those measuring spoons you were using earlier for the uh, salad dressing? Yes. Large ones or small ones? The small ones. I need the half teaspoon and the full teaspoon. Okay. 
these are going, they're bringing that first bing we just heard it, it reached the, the set degrees, that first one. So we've got about another thing on 12 minutes, so I'm going to be, I'm going to turn it off and reset for three more minutes. So I've added, basically I've added about a minute and a half to my original time so it could come up to 10, all right? So we're going to wait for that. So I've got my garlic in here. I'm going to put about a teaspoon as soon as he brings me the, um, the measuring spoons. Is that just raw garlic or is the one you That was, no, that was the garlic that I just ground, the whole fresh garlic that I ground in the food processor. All right? All right. I can eyeball this if y'all are okay with that. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of dry basil. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now I only use cayenne pepper. I don't use black pepper because I just think it's not uh, healthy. And I just like the flavor that the red pepper gives to the dish. I consider it zest, not hot like Tabasco or jalapeno or that, but zesty. So that's what the cayenne brings to it. It's a low heat, it's a zest. So when I first uh, made this salad dressing, I called it zest. But um, my son felt like it was a uh, soap. I'm gonna use a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. I, use, I like to use a high quality balsamic vinegar, one that's aged, it will say on there, the age. Balsamic vinegar is really wine almost. It's got lots of sugar and grapes and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do that. Hey, uh, bring me that little measuring cup you were using to make the dressing. That clear plastic one, please. All right, just real quick, like, sorry about that. We kind of got a little delay. Did he already take the reservoir bowl? Okay, all right. All right, any questions so far? Now this, this particular measuring cup is got millimeters on it, so about a half a cup is about 125 millimeters. Um, most everything that you produce and you have product, products in the grocery store, they're in milliliters, or you know, some other measurement that we don't understand and why they're like that, I don't know. But this is the basic rule of making any salad dressing. You use a two to one ratio on your oil to your vinegar. So if you're using white vinegar and salad oil, it's a half a cup. Or if you're making a lot more, it's more, okay? This is it. I kind of feel like the parish priest. There we go, adding them, I'm two to one. And that's it right in there, okay? Now, you've liked that, didn't you? Oh, that's what it was. Uh -oh. I love it. It was the scientist bells. Is that what you're saying? Oh, my God. I didn't go that far. She said that. I did not say that. Okay. But it's a great idea. I love it. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to attend, uh, attend to the... Um, this isn't going to hurt. Look how lovely that is. Um, That's beautiful. Already, I'm going to let them rest. I'm going to finish my whisk here. I love this new whisk. It's got a double action, so that inside action. You know the thing with the whisk, uh, it all gets clogged up, but this one really keeps that from happening. I think it's a Wilton product. They put salt on this because I want this vegetable to open up. Now, you know, if you make cucumber sandwich, sandwiches, you've ever made that, and they're always too soggy. Well, what you have to do is you have to put salt on the cucumber and put it in a colander and let it sweat for two or three hours and drain all that water out of that. So what the salt does here is it's going to open up the pores, if you will, on the vegetables so that when I add this dressing, they're going to marry or marinate, as they say, and um, it's going to be wonderful. Okay. Now, you can do this ahead of time because you want this to just marinate. Hey, um, JR, yes. can you bring me back uh, blue cheese? Because balsamic and blue cheese is like something, you, it's like something God thought of because it's fabulous, okay? All right, all right. Now, 
I'm, I wanted to roast these pecans a little, so I was just going to kind of scurry them in some butter and salt and olive oil, but I'm not going to do that because it really doesn't really need it tonight. So I'm just going to put that on the layer like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take this like this. I'm going to add this. Uh, this is baby greens. This is called a field of greens or a spring mix. It's got lots of different lettuces in there, beautiful colors, spinach, arugula, uh, purple lettuce. They're all very tender. That's what they're baby. Now, the thing with that baby lettuce is that it's going to wilt real fast when it hits that salad dressing. So I'm going to add some of this romaine. I don't want to do it too far ahead, but I'm just going to cross cut this and I'm going to put that on the top. And you just throw that on the top of this, add it to that, so that when that wilts down. Now, if you're serving at your house and the, your salad, huh? all right. Now, this salad, thank you. This salad, um, why don't you go ahead and put one of those on each one of those plates, please. Um, this salad's ready to go. I can sur sur saran wrap it and stick it in the fridge, come back to it tonight or tomorrow. I could have made it at lunch, put it in the fridge. Are you going to a party? Your dressing's already in there. You don't have to bring the caress with the dressing. It's all in there. It's in the bottom. And then after a while, when we get ready to have salad, I'm going to mix that, okay? And I'm going to do it with my hands because it's the only real way to really get the salad to have the marriage that we want. All right? Any questions about the salad? Okay, you want my dear? All right, well, let's, uh, let's look at these um, the eggplant. Oh. You know what? I lost my beautiful sauce. It's just been behaving. It's nice and thick. You can see that. It's a quick sauce. My aunt, you know, the one with the matching shoulders. I had, she called it the quick sauce because they, they made a gravy. The, uh, the matching, the, the other sauce, the tomato gravy, cooks for six hours. The Bolognese sauce, which is made with, you begin with tomato sauce and ground meat, and then you have the other sauces that you make with different kinds of tomatoes, but those three primarily start differently and they take longer to cook. All right? This is beautiful. All right. We're going to take our eggplant which has been soaking, you can see. It's very pliable, you see it's, it's, you know, it's almost, I don't want to say rubbery, but it's, it's going to yield itself very nicely to, the, um, to what we want to do with it. All right, yes. we're going to do an egg wash, which is going to be milk and eggs, and um, then we're going to dredge it in flour that we, um, we're gonna we're gonna put salt, a little salt in there, some cayenne pepper. All right, just gonna mix that up a little so we can dust them real nicely. Like this, I'm gonna add some whole milk to it, like that. A little bit of salt and pepper to it. Now some people like to use. Uh, some pre-made seasoning like a Tony Sashries or that. Um, I hesitate in this application because I don't know exactly what, um, you know, I'm gonna want some of the chopped, the one that's in that part container. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna mix this egg up real well. I'm gonna dredge it from the egg. Add some olive oil to this. to it. Olive oil and butter? Olive oil and butter. The olive oil, you add the olive oil to the butter because the olive oil keeps the viscosity of the butter from burning and it keeps it lower. Need too much more olive oil in here. Thank you very much. All right. Just going to put some butter in here in a minute. We're going to make the uh, butter and uh, garlic for the noodles. All right. All right. 
can't tell your cardiologist you were here. Okay? He does not need to know. All right? Got this good and mixed. All right? And I'm going to take this like this. I'm soft. I'm soft. And just very quickly. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. Right. All right. Thank you. Give me a different rag. It's wetter than this, and not as not as grimy. Okay. More of a more of a bar mop. Yep. Alright. Put that in there. Just bring that up. Now that I've got the food in it, I can heat it. I'm, this isn't going to take long. I'm just going to fry it real quick. Um, and JR, I'm going to need the uh, one of that the excess. Putting that in there. Alright, got one more and get a little space for a narrower one. Now, I would have um, um, trimmed them a little more. Push this up. Now, you look, you can see I'm bringing all that wonderful marinated stuff up from the bottom. You see how beautiful that is? This is going to be a, a memory worth repeating. Because, you know, when you go to Facebook and you check in, if you haven't checked in yet, I want you to check in. And I want you to say on the comment, I want you to say, you're an idiot if you don't go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, you know, in that movie, what was the, uh, the Devil Loves Prada? You tell that man, if you don't hire, you're an idiot. Okay? How about that? Is that gorgeous? Ooh. Um, you know, someone said, you've got to come up with a better name, but I can't think of a better name than a gourmet salad. Have you seen that? Is that beautiful? Oh my gosh. When you serve it this way, you can control that you don't get all lettuce. differently so that it can press. It's got a certain arc on it so it gets the lettuce. So if you don't do like this with the lettuce, it's not going to pick it up. But if you turn the fork over and use the arc as a fulcrum, it will lift the lettuce. Sometimes you have a, a salad fork that has a little bitty um, notch in one one of the um, things on it. Is that the right word, Jen? Is it time? Is it time? Time. Time. Okay. So, um, started with some high quality ricotta or ricotta. Uh, I used, you can buy it made either with skim milk or with whole milk. I used a whole milk today. So, I've got three pounds of that. Of it. So, I'm going to use one egg for each pound. Now, on your recipe card, it doesn't say egg. So if you're making notes and you intend to actually cook this recipe, you might want to put on that one egg per pound of cheese, okay? I'm going to add three eggs. I'm going to add some cayenne pepper. I'm going to add some coarse salt. All right? I'm going to add some nutmeg. Whenever you're using cheeses and that, you use some um, thing. You know what, my friend? I need a cup and a half of shredded mozzarella right? from the freezer. All right? I'm going to use some nutmeg with the cheese because it cuts down on the edge, the, the sharpness of the cheese. Whenever you're making a cream sauce or a white sauce, 
always add a little nutmeg, it really makes a, a big difference, especially if you're using eggs. I, I want this tool because you can see how wonderful it is. It just works and it just pulls the cheese right off of there. It's marvelous for zesting. It's marvelous for um, just grating the cheese at the point of serving. All right. Just love it. Okay. So now I'm gonna mix this cheese up with this. It's uh, got a boom in front of it, so it's uh, hard to get to. Thank you. I'm just mixing up this really well, getting all that combined. Combining that, I'm going to add to this some freshly chopped flat parsley. I prefer the Italian flat parsley. I think the other curly parsley is primarily used for garnish. The only application I use it for is at Passover when you have to dip your parsley in the bitter herb. <laughs> That's the only time. And you put it in the salt water. Nutmeg. Cayenne. Cayenne. All right. Mix that real good. Now we have we have a total of three cheeses in here. We have ricotta, ricotta cheese, mozzarella cheese, and we also have um, the Romano cheese. This nice uh, aged Romano that we grated fresh into there. So, any questions about that? As you can see, these are all nice and brown and ready to roll. They're just ready to be give their lives for your enjoyment. All right. I'm going to take these. I'm going to take the recipe says about a quarter of an in, a quarter of um, that. Too much. And I'm just going to roll it and tuck it under like that. Okay. And I'm going to put that roll thing in my like that. The eggplant. All right. These are still a little hot, so I'm going to wait a few more minutes. To set those rolls in there like that, okay? Any questions about that? I'm gonna add a little bit of parsley to my buttered garlic. Now, you can even add anything. Did you hear me say earlier I added fresh oregano to the buttered garlic and olive oil at the market the other night? You can add just about anything uh, to that. But that's just going to sit there and simmer. Ace this bread with that oil and that, you know, like it really needs it. Now this is from Rouse's. This is from the pizza department. It's, a, it's the Fricosha bread. It comes out right out of their uh, stone oven right there in the new store on Bertrand. If you sign up on their website, they will send you their demonstration schedules and you can know when I'm there. So you can come out and see me demonstrating there or in the Youngsville store. All right? So I've got that bread. These freeze beautifully, okay? So you can make these ahead and just have them in the pan like that. Somebody says they're coming over, you whip them out, you let them thaw for about 45 minutes, and they bake in 20 minutes. They're ready to, um, they're ready to eat. All right. Just sort of wrap them like that. Tuck it down like that. You can see how the, it's, the roll is yielding itself. And I'm just doing like that. Any questions about any of this? Does this look like it'd be too hard to do at home? No. 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 Is it hot to the toothpick three? No, no, because no. When it heats, the, the, um, the cheese is gonna set. That egg in there is gonna make that cheese set. Deal. So we're going to get that like that. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Mm -hmm. Be impressed. You whip that. You pull that out of the oven. God, I got home from work late. I didn't know what I was going to fix. And 
This just happened. Because it was an afterthought, I didn't have time to run to Abbey Mill. But this is a chicken Italian sausage with an azzurro, 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 cheese in it. So it's kind of fun. It's more of a cocktail sausage. It's not going to do as well as I wanted to do, but you're going to get the sense of what I was trying to do. This is It's not giving off as much fat as a regular Italian sausage, which is mostly pork and meat. So I've added uh, a little olive oil to that to make it sort of nice and that, and then I added some parsley and it's real nice and it's got a, the, the, the sausage itself has cheese in it. It's a product that comes like that with the cheese in it. I've boiled the linguine. I broke the linguine in half. I break it in half. I'm not one of those purists that say it's pretty that the noodles have to be left whole. I'm just gonna pour this, remember this? It's the soaking um, olive oil. I added a little parsley to it to give it some color. Remember I said the other night I added, um, God, I really am like the clergyman. Mm. There we go, double, double. I use my turkey lifters as tosters because they do a fabulous job. Uh, two things, I wanted to give some extra flavor here. And I wanted to also have the noodles to have something on them that's going to make them movable and that we can make nice um, nests. Um, give me a little more parsley, uh, JR. Okay. Roasted? Yeah, the, the one that's in the bowl is still there. I'm going to put that right there. In about. Um, I've got about 12 minutes, but I've got about seven minutes left. I'm going to put the rustic bread in there, the focaccia bread. Remember, we, we did it with the olive oil and the butter. We'd like to use the olive oil and the butter. And so um, we're having a fabulous dessert today that is probably the easiest dessert that has ever been made. And um, so I'm not even going to start it because it, it, it takes less than Oprah. Okay. I hope a commercial set to make. So it's going to be, thank you, thank you very much. Um, that, let's see, huh? Very nice, very nice. And look, I'm just going to garnish this. So when all those people who are waiting for dinner are looking over, they see this beautiful plate of pasta, you know? And you they can say, oh my gosh, look at that. And it's also beautiful. We added this color with that color, and we're going to bring the the nice roasted colors. You can see in the oven, the blue is setting off the rolls very nicely. Oh, it's just, oh my God. I mean, you can see that that's a little bird. It's just like a dream. Okay. All right, remember if you go on our website, accidentalcooking.com, you will um, find a complete list of classes. Those of you who registered, all of our special events. We also have a blog inside of the website. If you register with our blog, whenever we're blogging about anything particular, you will get an email notification. So it's a way for us to keep up. As the company maturates, we will be having culinary travel where you'll be able to go to a desk.